welcome to sharing the COVID action updates for 2022 to 2023 and what a past year it has been. From specialist food to nutrition training for support staff across Surrey, a direct outcome of the whole system's approach to obesity with Public Health England to looking at the impact of tech on travel and tourism for adults with disabilities. From research looking at the take up of cancer screening for adults with learning disability in partnership with University of Glasgow, funded by Cancer Research UK, to co-designing the first easy read policies. The experts with lived experience and guest partners are here today are sharing some brief updates so you can see what range of real life co-production takes place with more equal focus and better understanding how important it is to support everyone to join in whatever projects we want and are able to share our experience in. in. Some of the research you will hear about today is still ongoing and yet to have its final papers submitted. Some may be published later in the year and some is going to need more funding to keep going. But you will have a chance to ask questions at the end. So sit back, have a nice cup of tea and a biscuit <laughs> and enjoy hearing what projects the COVID action team have been part of. Co-designing in the real world for mental health hospitals. We've been involved as project teams looking at the design and development of the buildings, researching dementia in learning disability, tech and the impact it has had on those with disability being able to book travel and tourism appointments and bookings for holidays, the cancer screening with Cancer Research UK, creating accessible communications and exploring relationships for adults with learning disability. I'd like to hand over now to Steve Palmer from Sky, who's going to share, us some in share with us some information about the week that they have had. Well, thank you very much indeed. I'll just uh, do that thing where I share my screen and then go to the slides and hopefully can you all see the slides? Yeah, I should say my name, Co-Production Week, Steve Palmer. There we go. And it's got today's date on and everything. Um, just just to say it, um, co-production week um, has been going for eight years now. Well, by five o'clock this afternoon, we would have done the eighth co-production <laughs> week. So 2016 when it started, we threw a big festival. Um, we kind of lost the funding for that after COVID, but it's all kind of done online these days. So we've had a range of activities this week, and I just thought, want to go through um, them with you. What we did earlier in the year, though, we did a massive survey, and when I say massive, it's like about a thousand people replied. That's quite that's quite a good response to get about a thousand replies. So this is the sort of cover art to our survey. We discovered that 72% of the workforce have heard of co-production, 56% of people with lived experience or people who draw on services or whatever you want to describe people who used to be called service users, um, but hopefully we've moved on, um, know about um, co-production. The, the interesting thing, though, is that in the count, we discovered that in the councils, the higher up you come to be, say, director of adult social services, the more you know about co-production. And the more close you are to the front line, the less you're likely to know about co-production. So something really needs to be done about that because um, it's, it sounds a bit like sort of dusty uh, books on shelves, doesn't it? Um, so uh, what what can be done? That's our challenge to leaders, especially in places like local authorities, where we're saying, well, what, what, what can you do to make sure that um, you are um, making co-production happen on the front line? Um, so um, that's one thing. We, we came out with a number of barriers uh, for staff, this is just one of the slides, time, cost, communications, the culture of the organisation, sharing power. Um, but also um, we came up with some recommendations as well. It'll all be in the report. When I finish this, I'll, I'll bung a few links uh, from what I've been saying into the chat so that, you know, I'm not just going on and on and on. But we had this event on Monday at the House of Lords. It was the House of Lords. Um, and a number of people turned up, so we talked about the survey. 
um, there. Uh, it was chaired by Lord Victor Adebowale, who is very much uh, liking social care and saying he loves the idea of um, of, uh, of co-production. The guy there with his hand on his chin is actually Rory Kinnear, who is currently, I gather, in The Diplomat. He plays the Prime Minister of the, and he's been in some James Bond films, but he, um, he supports a, a charity that uh, funded some of our research. And so it was great to have there, but also people with lived experience, people with learning disabilities who have helped make uh, co-produced to make a film um, about their, their experiences in COVID. So that was really good. And then afterwards, look, there I am. That's the kind of, oh, we've done it. The, um, the catering went OK. The people turned up. There were no disasters. All, all the, you know, the name badges, they were all in the right place. And no one went, my name badge isn't here. And we didn't have to write someone's name on a bit of card. None of that happened. So that's why we're looking me and my colleagues are a little bit excited outside um, the, 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 the the parliament there. There's, there's a, I think that's um, that's Cromwell's statue in the background. So you don't get to go and do that every day, do you? But, you know, it's quite interesting, actually, just as an aside, the rooms at the House of um, all across Parliament are so small that actually quite a few of the people who are wheelchair users got all backed up. And so it's not a perfect place accessibility wise. It sounds very grand, but actually that was the probably the one problem that came out of it. Um, well, here we go. Here's Helen's blog. Um, we usually run some blogs during the week and this week, no exception. I think Helen was one of the first, possibly the first person to come and say, can I write a blog for you for co-production week? And so thank you again for that. And um, they, they've been really well received. So thank you very much indeed, actually, Prospect for that. Um, and then, you know, probably the last slide really is just all the other activity two animated films and I can put the links in. Um, well, I'll put the link into the whole of the site so you can see where the films are and the survey. We did a couple of podcasts with our friends at Think Local Act Personal. Um, uh, there's a guy uh, being on a webinar, so we did a webinar as well about the survey and people with um, lived experience were responding to, to that. And then just that picture of the guy with his fingers doing that sort of thing, um, that is just one of the pictures. Um, taken around the country during co-production week with activities going on that we didn't know about. Um, enough people like yourselves told us what you were doing during co-production week, um, but but others just sort of were suddenly on social media saying here was doing, and it's just been amazing. I can put a link later to all the pictures of stuff going all over. I mean, Twitter just, we, we don't really have a very big Twitter presence, but for this week we do always, and this, this week has been no exception. So just some, you know, ideas and someone's done a co-pro cuppa. Um, that, that I think that's going on today. You know, so there's so many um, bits of activity uh, going on. Uh, I mean, and it's really great. Eight years in, hopefully. Um, we've now got people um, saying, well, yeah, I really know it's co-production week. Um, there was the hashtag there. Um, so so that's that, 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 that that's probably my final slide. Um, there's a little bit of an advert there if you want to sign up to our newsletters either at Sky or TLAP, Social Care Institute for Excellence and Think Local App Personal both have some um, newsletters to sign up to. But that's it really. Uh, I don't know if anybody's got any, uh, I'll stop sharing my screen now and I don't know if anybody's got any questions they want to ask about Copen Production Week as a, as a whole. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Or, um, whatever. Or have I spoken too long? No, Steve, that was bang on. Thank you so much for sharing your Sky Week. It's been lovely to watch everything unfold each day. Um, if it's OK with everyone, unless there's a really pressing question, I've done a bit at the end where we could all come together to ask questions Perfect. Perfect. of the presenters. So if that's all right with everyone, we'll move on now, if I may. To... I'll, just, I'll just bung in some oh, of those sorry, links. On the, I'll bung in some of those links in the chat as we go along. So, you know, people can, people can look at them later so that it doesn't take up time. Fantastic, Steve, thank you. And I'm now going to hand over to Dr Anna Cox and she's going to share some information about the Together project and the wonderful programme that we have been involved with. Anna, over to you. Thank you, Helen. Um, so I think I've got eight minutes, am I right, Helen? You just talk, 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 what's, talk with whatever information you've got to share. And if I need to, need to very gently go, OK, we're good for time, I will. Okay. That's good. I can talk for England on this project, so that's why I wanted to check. Um, so can you see my slides OK? Perfect. Brilliant. OK, so thank you for inviting me to come and talk to you about the Together project. Um, the Together 
Together Project aims to support midwives to deliver good maternity care to people with learning disabilities. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the third phase of the Together Project this morning, which co-produced and co-delivered learning disability awareness training. But I'd just like to give you a very whirlwind account of the first two phases, just to put it in context. So it was actually inspired by the story of a man called Scott. So this is a picture of Scott. He's a, a father with learning disabilities. Um, when his wife was expecting their daughter, he was working with Health Education England and he used to go to work and talk about the challenges they were facing and how scared they were that they weren't going to be able to raise their daughter. So Health Education England looked at the literature and it supported Scott's story, sadly, that women with learning disabilities are the least likely to report a positive experience of good maternity care and midwives report um, lacking the skills and confidence to deliver good care and they wanted some guidance. So Health Education England funded the Together project. This very busy slide gives you a very whistle stop tour of phases one and two. Basically, we looked at what existed already in terms of research and resources. We spoke to parents with learning disabilities and their carers, and we interviewed health and social care professionals. And we used all of that information to draft two resources, some guidelines and a toolkit for healthcare professionals and a maternity passport to be completed with and held by parents to be with learning disabilities. In phase two, we took those into NHS trusts and we said, please use our resources, tell us what works, what doesn't, tell us how they need to change, tell us what the barriers are. And then we interviewed people who'd engaged with them to find out more. So we ended up with a toolkit for professionals, which is on our website. It's got guidelines, action checklist, a refined maternity passport that can be used by people who are expecting a baby that want a more accessible, personalised care plan. But we also made a film, but it's 25 minutes long, so I don't think I can squeeze that into my eight minute slot, but it's brilliant. So please do go to our website and watch it. It's also co-produced and features the voices of eight parents with learning disabilities, talking about how they'd like people to ask if they've got a learning disability. So how to do that sensitively and respectfully. Um, but in phases one and two, what we kept hearing from midwives was that there was a lack of learning disability awareness training, that they felt that there was a gap in their education and that this particularly should happen at undergraduate level where there should be more training in learning disability awareness. But they also highlighted that actually the most important part of training is hearing people's voices that have learning disabilities, hearing about the challenges they have faced, hearing about practical solutions that could have helped them. So we heard this and we went back to Health Education England and we said we'd like to co-produce some learning disability awareness training for our student midwives to be delivered by people with learning disabilities. So that's what we did. We co-produced learning disability awareness training for student midwives and this took place over five days. We recruited a team of eight people with learning disabilities who came once a month to the University of Surrey. Um, we spent half a day together each month co-producing what that learning disability awareness training would look like. And we had a lot of fun. If any of them are on this call, I'm sure they'll agree. We had a lot of fun. And you can see in the top left image, Scott, the inspiration for the project, who has been a part of the project since the very beginning, um, has got up the NIHR principles for good co-production. Now, they have the principles of sharing power, including everyone's views, respecting each other, learning from each other and building relationships. But we spent the first session together actually deciding how we were going to make those happen in practice. So they weren't just principles, but they were actually actioned as part of our group. So all of the text in these boxes is text that the group put together. These are their rules. And I think one of the most fundamental aspects of co-production is this building relationships, which is why we made sure we didn't rush this. It took place over five months. And I think it's really important to recognise that Active Prospects and the Alfreda Society, who both worked with us, they came too. So not just the people with learning disabilities, but their advocate their support workers, the co-production manager, Helen, came to all of these. Uh, the director of care, Jade, came. I mean, 
everyone invested and having the people there that already have trusted relationships with the people with learning disabilities meant that it supported us as researchers to build those trusted relationships as well. So I think that shows, uh, Steve referred to some of the barriers to co-production being time and cost and the context of the organisation. And yes, absolutely, this was expensive. It took a lot of time, but I think having those um, representatives from the organisations really helped us to think about the sharing of power and the building of relationships. And I think that was fundamental to the success of the project. So once we developed, once we co-produced the learning disability awareness training, we invited the people with learning disabilities to deliver the training. It was an invitation, it wasn't mandatory, but they all chose to do it. And they were fantastic ambassadors for the University of Surrey. Um, I think, I mean, they grew in confidence throughout each of the delivery sessions and they really shone. Um, you can see that they delivered the, um, the training that they developed. So here on this slide, you can see mind maps behind them. They created these mind maps and then they used it to deliver the education. And they trained 109 student midwives across five days. So each midwife had a three hour session with experts by experience. And at the end of each session, the people with learning disabilities personally handed out certificates to each student midwife, thanking them for their commitment to improving their learning disability awareness. So you can see 109 certificates on this page. The feedback from students is amazing. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. Please keep doing these workshops to spread the word. It only helps the next generation of health professionals to be more educated and aware. To see people with learning disabilities be given a voice in this project was really very wonderful. I'm so grateful to you for this initiative. It made me really quite emotional. I now feel more confident in knowing how to start the conversation with someone with a learning disability and how to make reasonable adjustments to suit people's individual needs. I really enjoyed the Together Project training. I'll definitely use the resources in my practice. I find the mind maps really helpful to give us helpful ways of how we can support people with learning disabilities. I think this training should be taught next year and all the years after that. I feel it's important. Thank you so much for the morning session. It was fabulous and so informative. We've also conducted pre and post surveys um, either side of the training. Um, we're currently analysing it and that will be published, but yeah, not ready for release yet. But the feedback from the trainers themselves is also wonderful. I feel so proud to be in this project. I speak, I'm speaking up more. I've made new friends. I'd like to do this in the future. I feel like we're learning off each other. I really enjoyed today. I feel very confident the more I do this. I felt we were learning from students as they were learning from us. I feel a bit emotional. It's come to an end. I really enjoyed it. I hope we get a chance to do this again. They were amazing and I think they should all seek further opportunities to do more of this and I'm glad they enjoyed it as much as they did. I think the projects have real impact as I hope uh, the analysis we do and the publication will support, but it's only possible by working with experts and we're very grateful to Active Prospects, the Alfreda Society and The Grange for working with us to make it possible. If you want to know more, go to our website. You can download all of our resources. And thank you to everyone who's made it possible. Was that eight minutes, Helen? Did I do OK? <laughs> Anna, you're amazing. And I think everybody will agree. I find it quite hard not to get a little bit choked up when I see some of the feedback from the people involved, because watching the individuals who took part on that day one meeting when we were all in that huge boardroom set up, to the final sessions where we just sat back and we let the trainers train. It was absolutely wonderful. And I'm so delighted that we've been able to be a part of that with the University of Surrey, hopefully the first of many projects and also hopefully uh, an inspiration to anybody else watching who might be able to support with any funding grants or any help with applications to enable this to carry on through future groups of student midwives. And potentially, Anna, we, we spoke about the other opportunities for maybe social workers, maybe other medical practitioners, because learning disability awareness really should be broadly across everybody, all sectors. It shouldn't be exclusively to, to the midwifery teams. 
So um, I know Jade's got lots of ideas on that and, and has had words with some people. So that will be another conversation for another time. But Anna, thank you hugely and really glad that you were able to join us today. I'd now like to hand over, please, to Emily. Emily, I know you're here because I saw you, but there's so many faces now. I can't see where you're. <laughs> Emily, Emily, wonderful. Um, do you have any slides you wanted to share, Emily, or are you wanting I to be? I don't. I didn't have any slides, I'm afraid. I'm wishing I had. No, now, don't be afraid. I just have Absolutely to look at my face, fine. unfortunately. <laughs> Absolutely fine. OK, I will. Emily, I will let you introduce yourself and let you talk to us about your projects. Brilliant. Thank you, Helen. And thank you again for inviting me to, to talk today. It's been so interesting so far to hear about all the things that have been going on and I'm looking forward to hearing the rest. Um, apologies if I kind of look from screen to screen. I've just got a few notes over here. Um, so I'll give a quick introduction to me. So my name's Emily. I am the Lived Experts Research Community Manager at Three Hands. Uh, Three Hands is a small organisation um, which is committed to creating meaningful connections between businesses and society. Um, and one of the ways we do that is through running insight sessions, um, which bring together staff from the businesses together with lived experts, people with lived experience. We call them lived experts. Um, we actually have our own community of 200 people from across the across the whole country um, with all sorts of different um, circumstances, um, health conditions, um, challenging situations they've been through, all of those kinds of things. Um, and um, these are the people that we invite to attend our um, insight sessions. However, we also work really closely with charities um, to um, to attend these sessions as well. And that is how we've worked with Active Prospects. Um, so earlier in the year, um, we ran a series of online focus groups with a major high street bank. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to name them, um, but we ran a series of online focus groups on the topic of mental capacity um, to look at what the bank can do better to support people with limited or fluctuating mental capacity, as well as um, carers of, of people with limited or fluctuating mental capacity. Um, so we held um, four online focus groups um, and the bank was keen to hear from people with a range of circumstances, including learning disabilities, dementia, mental health problems, brain injuries, um, and anything else really that can affect um, mental capacity. Um, to learn what the bank's doing well, what could be done better, um, and what people find challenging, um, and everything in between. Um, so we spoke with Active Prospects, we spoke with Helen, and to, to work out who would be interested in getting involved. Um, she got some names for us who were really keen to, to share their views, and um, some people who weren't necessarily able to participate in, so usually people would dial into the Zoom call um, just on their own laptops but some people might not necessarily feel comfortable with, with doing that so what we managed to do with this was to bring a group of people from Active Prospects in a room together um, supported by a member of staff from Active Prospects um, and I think Anna you'd spoke about um, people feeling comfortable when there's a sort of familiar face almost and I think that really, really resonated because working with a member of staff from Active Prospects to help to help the participants to to be able to share their views and to feel comfortable just worked amazingly. Um, the the participants were brilliant. They they really shared some brilliant insights. Um, and um, the the staff from the the business came away having learned a lot. And I get onto that in a minute. But um, what we do at Three Hands um, is always offer lived experts a payment for getting involved in the sessions. Um, we want to recognise that them as experts. Um, show that we valued their time and the effort they've put into it. Um, we send out briefing documents in advance so people might want to actually prepare. They don't have to, but people might want to think about what they're talking about in advance. So just recognising the effort that people put into um, to participate in our sessions. Um, so we always offer a payment to lived experts, but on this occasion, we also um, offered a contribution to Active Prospects to say thank you for their their involvement as well and recognising the, the time and the effort that they put in to to supporting the lived experts to take part. Um, so that was that was that session. More widely, um, we work very closely with mostly financial institutions. So we've got a few different um, high street banks that we're working with at the moment. So we've got the, that's a bi-monthly kind of focus group um, on a range of different topics. So that was mental capacity. We've also done um, a series on the cost of living crisis, on digital inclusion, um on neurodiversity um then with another high street bank we run uh monthly panel sessions to kind of evaluate or to get lived experts in to evaluate 
the services and the products that are on offer or that, that are kind of in in the process of being about to be offered um, to get their views and to, to critique those. Um, and we also do kind of standalone um, workshops, often in person on a range of topics. So we've got one coming up on bereavement, for example, and we had one earlier in the year on, on pensions and particularly on how kind of challenging circumstances and, and health conditions, for example, can influence your journey to, to all those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, it's often financial organisations that we work with, but more recently we did a piece of work in the energy sector. So we worked with um, people who have home med who rely on home medical equipment um, and who in a power cut would be, you know, obviously a power cut's inconvenient for most of us, but who would be really, really at risk in a power cut. And we worked with them to kind of hear all about that and to we even gave them the opportunity to test some products in their own homes which was a sort of exciting new step for for the organization um so yeah mostly working with the financial industry but branching out a little bit as well and i think it's really exciting that more and more kind of sectors of society are looking to hear from lived experts um because i think i think sort of people maybe associate co-production with kind of the health and social care um, industry but actually it's really interesting that banks are now coming to us and saying that they want to hear from people with all sorts of lived experiences um, to make their services better so that's really positive um, so in terms of kind of the the how people feel about working on these these um these projects I think for both the businesses and for the lived experts who take part it's overwhelmingly positive so the lived experts come away saying that they felt valued, they felt like they were heard. Some of them have actually said they didn't feel like anyone had listened to them before, but they really felt they were making a difference. Um, and actually, they feel like they learn a lot from the other lived experts who take part, um, who've gone through similar things, completely different things, but who they just feel understand. And then in terms of the business, they they go away learning so much more than they ever realised they'd learned. So the, the key thing about our work is that the businesses and the lived experts are there together. The businesses are there to hear from the lived experts directly. We don't we don't conduct interviews and focus groups on our own and then send the, the findings off to the businesses. We bring them together so they can directly hear from the lived experts themselves and they can ask any questions and it just becomes a conversation which is so much more productive. Um, and I actually one of the key one of the one of the big pieces of feedback I wanted to share was from these the mental capacity conversations that we we held a few months ago. One of the um, business participants um, said that her key takeaway was to stop making assumptions. So she'd gone in with an idea of what she thought um, people with lived experience were going to say about a, a certain topic. Um, she thought it's obvious they'll say this. This is it just makes sense. And people completely surprised her by saying the opposite. Or, or a range of things, often obviously with lived experience, everyone's circumstances are so personal that you just can't, you just can't assume anything and one, what works for one person won't work for another. So I think that's a really important thing to remember. But the main thing was that she just realised, wow, I need to stop assuming what people want. And I think that sums up why it's so important to work together with people with lived experience, because without speaking with them and, and hearing from them and working together with them, Business can, businesses can only guess what the solutions might be and often they just won't get it right. And Emily, so that's, that's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much. I've, I've got some sound bites which I would very much Brilliant. like to share from people who took part. And I also have, very negligent of me, two sound bites, two beautiful sound bites from the Together project, which I'd like to share with you as well. So sit back and watch. There's a, a couple of really lovely pieces here. Why do you think that it was important for you to hear, get to, to, wait, get, go on. to share your experiences in the co-design? To get your vote to get your voices heard in the future do you think you would like to take part in any any other co-design yes. projects in the future yes is there anything of particular interest that you might be interested in co-designing what sort of things are you interested in gardening anything really yeah lovely thank you michael
it's important for me to be in the photo because I could tell my eyes shine. I love to be part of the footage because I want to make safety. So who am I here with today? Uh, hi, I'm Olivia, I'm an aspiring prospect student. Hi, I'm James, I'm an aspiring prospect student. Hi, I'm Molly, I'm an aspiring prospect student. Perfect. Can you tell me about what you remember of the team's meeting on the co-production? Um, I remember um, it was with Emily from Freehands. Um, we were doing, we were helping with co-production with the bank about people with learning disabilities having more freedom and access with their banking because some of the people um, who we spoke with uh, had the card but they didn't actually like know what to do within the banking app. Fabulous, thank you Olivia. And what is the importance of co-production? The importance of co-production is so that people can come together and make changes and agree on things and make things easier for people with learning disabilities. Oh, fabulous, thank you so much James. And Molly, can you help me with this question? How does it make you feel to be involved with co-production? It makes me feel that I'm helping a part of something become a whole, I believe. Absolutely. Anyone else to add to that? How does it make you feel to be a no, part of co-production? Um, we can make the world easier for people with learning disabilities so that they're not discriminated and that they can find it easier using a bank card and have more freedom. So it makes me proud to have a say in it as someone living with learning disabilities. Fabulous. And Olivia, anything to add to that or is that pretty much covered? It, it makes me feel happy to help people because um, it's hard enough living with a learning disability as well as knowing how to navigate banking, so yeah. Thank you so much guys, that was a big help. Were you an expert for? I was an expert for the high street banks. And that was with three hands, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And why was it important to you to be asked your thoughts and opinions on banking by a major high street bank? Because it's important for us to get involved and then they don't uh, guess what we need. So it's getting us involved and understanding our needs and they stop guessing and to work together with people with learning disabilities of what our needs are and understand about people with learning disabilities. That's brilliant, thank you so much. I think you can see from all those soundbite videos that everybody who was involved in any of those projects really enjoyed being a part of the process and certainly felt valued and felt that their their words, their thoughts, their experiences and everything were being properly listened to. It wasn't just going through the tick box buzzword exercise. It really was a case of having valued input into projects that will have significant change for people in the future. I'd now like to pass to Penny Fershman. She is very kindly joining us because Charlotte Robotham, who took part in a, a redesign and a, a co-design of some literature that is being shared across the Surrey and Sussex Healthcare Trusts. Uh, Charlotte came and joined one of the proactive community meetings to speak to some of the experts with experience about their thoughts on mm -hmm. the communications across Surrey and how mm -hmm non-inclusive some of those were so we wanted to help make a change so penny are you there can't see penny mm. penny's there yes I can see yeah yeah i am right, i'm going <laughs> to pop you on a spotlight penny then everybody can see okay. you better i hope it works spotlight 
Penny, welcome. Hi, so yeah, I'm Penny Fershman. I'm um, the patient experience lead at Surrey and Sussex Healthcare NHS Trust, so covering like East Surrey Hospital, Crawley Hospital, Horsham Hospital. Um, and uh, I manage Charlotte, but we worked really closely on the project Helen was just talking about. Um, and we have recently had to look at our patient and um, public participation strategy uh, because she's just moved into my team and we're we're revamping the, the whole kind of patient experience, patient participation side of things. And we are both really quite passionate about making sure that we've got people involved right from the, the start of anything that we do in the hospital so that we're um, we're making sure that any changes that we make and anything that we're doing is coming from the people that, that we're serving uh, rather than just our ideas and, and what we think people need. Um, so within our strategy, we've looked at making sure that we're involving patients uh, in our, we've got a people's panel that we've got set up um, and we invite people to be part of projects that we're doing, meetings that we have in the hospital and identifying any changes that need to be made through different forms of, of feedback or things that the panel come up with um, and then getting them involved in the actual projects. So this has just started. Um, so it's it's at the early stage of finding out what we need to um, to get people involved in. But that's that's the aim. Um, and the other side of it is making sure that we're hearing from the right people. So there's um, we get a lot of feedback in the hospital um, about different things to do with the hospital, but it tends to all come from really white middle class. Older Penny, your um, um, sound has gone. Penny, your sound has gone a bit. Yeah, you've gone funny too. I think your Wi Fi might be letting Is that you any down. better? You've become a bit robotic. Penny, I'm going to hand over to Abigail while your Wi-Fi settles. Is that all right? Penny's has gone a bit strange. If you turn your camera off briefly, Penny, we may find that your bandwidth is being chewed up by speaking and being seen. OK, Abigail, if you're there, may I hand over to you? Abigail. Yes, I'm here, Helen. Wonderful. If I hand over to Abigail, hopefully we'll get some settling of Penny's Wi-Fi and I can hand back. So, Abigail, I'm going to spotlight you and then it's easier for everybody to see you. No problem. I'll Wonderful. Thank you so much. Screen. Can you see my screen? Oh, I think you're on mute, Helen. If you take it to slideshow, it should hide your income. Yeah, perfect. Sorry, I'm, I'm really struggling with my network as well. So hopefully, um, hopefully it will be OK. <laughs> um, so again, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, my name's Abigail Price and I'm a health manager at Active Surrey. Um, so for those that don't know Active Surrey, we are the lead for physical activity, obviously within Surrey, um, and we work across three strands, so health, communities and education. So um, Helen's asked me to speak about the whole systems approach to healthy lifestyles. Um, so I've been working with Active Prospects in particular, Helen and Jade, for around two years now. I think it was April 2021 we started this project. And back in April 2021, um, Active Prospects were giving, given a small amount of funding to work through the whole systems approach to obesity framework. So the obesity framework um, originally derived from Public Health England, um, obviously now called OHID, just to confuse things. Um, and essentially, the idea was to work through this approach in, in a step, methodical step by step way. Um, I'd just like to note that even though it was call, called whole system approach to obesity, um, obviously there are ne negative connotations around that term. So we actually focused on a healthy lifestyles because it encompasses many different factors. So Active Prospects were one of the leads. So I worked with another four organisations um, and essentially um, Part of the purpose um, was to look at revised approaches to healthy living, exercise and eating. Um, like I said, we worked through 
the the framework in a methodical way. And it's important to note that the focus uh, was primarily working with um, people with lived experience, but also how we can support staff on the ground to support adults with learning disabilities. Um, we were involved with a number of different partners and um, I think Liz Williams is on the call, so I'm just going to mention this because her input was invaluable. So um, at the start of the project, um, we really found that there was a lack of research in terms of statistics. Um, and Liz joined the project from, I think it was around 20, April 2022 and um, highlighted some serious concerns, including a higher risk to obesity and a couple of following areas, which I'd just like to highlight. So number one, um, those living in supported living services or living in um, the county, um, being a female with a learning disability in which there's actually a 20 year age negative gap um, to the general population. And also focusing on those young people who are 14 to 19 year olds, which statistics again show higher levels of people who are overweight or obese in certain categories. Um, and in terms of how this all start started, and I don't think I've ever said this to Helen and Jade, but I've worked with a number of organisations in co-productions over the years, and I'd just like to highlight how well Active Prospects do this. Um, I feel they do it with such purpose and meaning, um, and it goes back to that tick box kind of term, and that's something definitely which Active Prospects don't do. So I'd just like to say massive kudos to you as an organisation, um, and that you should be really proud of that. So um, in terms of a bit of background, um, there are a couple of workshops throughout the process. Um, I think we had four uh, people with lived experience who were all invited to join the workshops and invited to share their thoughts and experiences. Um, and then there was also data collect collected from members of proactive community, experts with lived experience again, and also support staff and managers of um, supported services. Moving on to the next slide. And I think um, you'll see this visual on the left hand side and obviously it's really small and I'm not expecting you to read this, but I just wanted to talk around it and highlight some of the the key barriers, I guess, and also um, the next steps in terms of implementation and, you know, what next, um, which obviously is the most important thing. Um, so in terms of um, barriers, um, and this has all come about from working with experts with lived experience, as might like to add. So first of all, the gaps in community health care. So um, one major concern raised through the mapping and talking to experts with experience was around the known gaps in, like I said, community health care. So, for example, and I know this has been mentioned before, there are gaps in people receiving annual health checks in all areas of Surrey, with some GPs not carrying them out at all. And obviously there's a lot of work um, that, you know, that needs to go on behind the scenes. And we understand that GPs are, you know, extremely busy. But that's one area of focus, I know, for active prospects and us going forward in Surrey County Council. Um, and in some cases, which is quite shocking, that when um, someone was weighed and measured and they were identified, as being above a healthy weight range, there was actually no signposting opportunity. So they were potentially being told that they were overweight. But unless we're providing people with the support, then, um, you know, that that's quite shocking and, and really worrying, for, isn't it? So I think that's really important. Um, in terms of, um, I'm just going to jump around to support staff, because I think this has been such a main focus of the findings of the whole systems approach um, to healthy lifestyles. Um, it became apparent how little investment there was in staff training from the government around nutrition and hydration. Um, and I was really shocked about this. And I'll be honest, I didn't know this myself. Um, with many providers delivering, obviously, just the mandatory units of, on the care certificate or just a three hour e-learning course, uh, which is actually only refreshed every three years. And I think we had quite a lot of um, you know in-depth discussions about how can we expect support staff to support people with um, LD um, in the right way and, and with meaning. So again I know that's something that's been looked at and I think we're really proud to say that um, I know public health um, in particular are working with um, something called an uh, organisation called REHIS 
which stands for the Royal Environmental Health Institute of Scotland. And they're looking to adapt a course that they've got there, which um, focuses on food and health for carers, supporting with adults, supporting adults with LD. Um, and I know there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Again, massive credit to Active Prospects. I believe that it's being piloted in September with the organisation. Um, it's then being tweaked and potentially, obviously, the idea is long term that it's rolled out across the whole of the county, um, supporting not just active prospects, but any care provider. And I know there's been discussions about other counties um, really wanting to do this too, regionally. So, again, really, really important that we're giving the education to the staff that, that they deserve to make the right choices for the adults that they will work with. Um, touching upon accessibility. Um, something that really stood out to me, I remember sitting in Woodhatch, um, working, uh, sitting next to a, a young lady with learning disabilities, um, and she mentioned that she really wanted to go swimming, and that's actually all she really wanted to do in terms of physical activity. Um, but there was some barriers around support staff going swimming with her. Um, and again, no judgment there, but mainly because they struggle to swim themselves. So again, that's an area and a piece of work in terms of how we can support start support staff um, around swimming. And I know further conversations are going to be had. Uh, really conscious of time. So just quickly talk about um, next steps. Um, I know active prospects are really keen to focus on integration of policies. Um, and look at how all providers have a policy which outline advice around weight management, including the duty of care guidance when a person lacks capacity and obviously motivational proactive practice where they do have capacity. And I know there's a lot of work that we want to do um, around those mandatory training modules. So thinking about smoking, alcohol, exercise and emotional health, because in terms of healthy lifestyles, it's not just about um, moving more and eating less because if, if ever you know it's not that easy otherwise everyone would be doing it so that's something that we'd really want to focus on um carrying on with the co-production so i know active prospects are really keen to involve experts by experience to be included in all, all areas of projects um so again really really important um and like i said before they, they do it with such meaning and purpose looking at those training modules how we can extend and enhance that um, and enable support staff to, again, support people in the right way. Um, and I know that there's a lot of conversation going on with active prospects and public health in within Surrey County Council about accessing those annual health checks and actually providing meaning. You know, those health checks have happened, but what next? Where can we support people to um, and give people the option to to make the right choices as much as possible? Abigail, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry to rush everybody. This was very much a, a brief overview and hopefully later in the year, if plans go to plan, uh, we might be able to do something in person, uh, which will be a more significant event that there, there will be um, an opportunity to, to give a, a, a more detailed overview of things and projects that are to come. Uh, I'd like to now please pass over to Winnie. Uh, Winnie, I know you're here, but I can't see you on my screen yep. of many. Well, wonderful. OK, it's fine. Winnie, I want to spotlight. There you are. Winnie, very warm welcome to you. Winnie is joining us from the University of Kent. And after Winnie has spoken, I've got a lovely piece that um, Pat would like to share with everybody. So, Winnie, I'm going to hand over to you. Yeah, I'll try to be quick as possible because I'm aware <laughs> of the time. Sorry to rush you. Sorry, no, no sorry. worries. No sorry. worries. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Helen. Hi, I'm Winnie Sang and I'm a PhD student at the University of Kent uh, Tizard Centre, which is a leading academic group of researchers uh, looking to autism, learning disability and uh, community care. Um, my research involves creating a quality of life measure for people with learning disabilities and dementia. So at this stage of the project, I'm currently interviewing people with learning disabilities who are currently being investigated for dementia dementia, so people with learning disabilities being referred or currently seeking a dementia diagnosis. Um, so yeah, thanks to Active um, Prospects and especially Helen for getting me in contact with one of the participants, Pat, I was able to collect um, meaningful data on what her thoughts of quality of life means to her, um, which will partially inform my 
um, new measure. We were using talking mats, so basically a symbol cast to help facilitate the conversation and the conversation is controlled and led by the participants. Um, so as we heard from today, a lot of the learning disability research is guided by co-production, particularly when it comes to um, community social health care. And in my line of work, um, looking into quality of life, there has been consistent evidence that proxy reports versus self reports of quality of life can differ quite significantly, no matter how much you know the individual. And I published a systematic review last year. We found that there are no quality of life measures, which, uh, which are specifically designed for people with learning disabilities and dementia, which is quite surprising because adults with learning disability are an at risk group of developing dementia compared to the general population. They're more likely to develop dementia at a younger age. So there's quite of work to be done in this area. Um, so co-production is vital in informing my new measures so they won't be skewed towards the perspective of just professionals and carers. Um, it's so my new measure will be partially be informed by lived experiences. Um, so I'm hoping this sort of new measure will be useful for future research, a way to measure new interventions and can be used to help um, sort of healthcare professionals to measure sort of quality of life for their patients to see that the care they receive is appropriate. Um, yeah, it's still in the baby stages. I'm in the process of recruiting participants at the moment. Um, so that's my quick whistle stop tour of my study. Winnie, you're wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'm very grateful because I know ideally you wouldn't probably be talking about it this early on because you're still collating all your findings. But we really look forward to seeing what is submitted and published um, yeah. and look forward to hearing the, the further outcomes of that. So thank you so much. Um, what I would like to do is share a really lovely soundbite that we've got. And I have to credit um, staff members with helping me to get these sound bites and everything ready and recorded and huge thank you to the marketing manager Janice who has made them look as lovely as they look so I'd like to share this one with Pat speaking hi I'm Shelley I'm here with Pat today to share her thoughts of being part of the dementia in adults with learning disability research study with the University of Kent Recently, Pat was interviewed by Winnie. So, Pat, what did you think about being interviewed by Winnie? I liked her because she spoke nice and clear so that I could understand what she was saying. Excellent. Pat, okay. so what was the best part about being interviewed? It's good to be interviewed by people you don't know and to get it over to the person who is speaking. OK, and what was the best part about being interviewed? by Winnie. What did you enjoy most? She showed you picture cards. She showed me pictures and then I had to tell her what they were. And it helped you understand the questions more. And it helped me understand the pictures more. OK, excellent. Right. Well, thank you, Pat. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, that We had to edit that because Pat gave so much lovely information, but some of it was um, a, an overshare. So we, we were mindful of people's privacy and um, everybody gave permission for their videos to be used today. So we've made certain that everybody has been included where they've asked to be or where they've been invited and, and wanted to be. There are many other people that we have engaged across all of these different projects. And I encourage you, if you would like to find out any more, to get in touch with any of the, the key researchers who you've seen here today. And it is now over to all of you. Uh, does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask of any of the people who have spoken today? Oh, Pen Penny is back. Penny, was, did, did you- I was just about to put my hand up. Ah, I, can, uh, Penny is back. I can do a really snapshot of what we did. Um, so Did hopefully you, you can hear me better all? now. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Yes, good. Um, yeah, so um, basically we wanted to hear from everybody who uses our um, hospitals and um, particularly people with poorer health outcomes, so including people with learning disabilities. So we thought it was really, really important that the strategy and the consultation questions that we sent out were actually accessible to people with learning disabilities. Um, and I have a brother with learning disabilities, so I'm quite passionate about this as well. So we reached out to Helen, who um, put us, uh, showed us photo symbols. So we actually got access to the right pictures to be able to do easy read. Um, and uh, Charlotte went to one of the um, groups at Active Prospects um, and had a really good session, it sounds like, um, going through the wording on the documents and the pictures, covering them up and saying, what does this picture mean to you? And making sure we had the right pictures on it. Um, so it was it was a really good um, way of getting people who, who have the lived experience involved in actually getting the questions right in the first place because there's no point us having questions that are inaccessible for a strategy that's about including people with with all learning disabilities or or anybody else that we can't um, normally access um so it was it was really really beneficial and it's made, meant that whenever we do something for in our team in the hospital we're thinking about easy read and we're thinking about involving people with learning disabilities and we're trying to encourage the rest of the hospital to do the same so it was really really good for us Wonderful, Penny, thank you. And I'm sorry we lost you early and delighted right. you were able to come back. <laughs> OK, right, jump off that one. Does anybody have any questions they would like to ask? Jade has a hand up. Jade? Hi. Um, firstly, I just I just wanted to say, because obviously um, Active Prospects, the organisation, you know, was named quite a lot for, throughout that. But, but to be honest, it is such a privilege to work alongside some of the people that have been involved in some of these projects and it's been quite an emotional journey um, as we, you know the, the together project is particularly emotional and the uh, BCE project we worked on was particularly but I, I think I think it just goes to show just listening to everybody this morning that when we come together whether we're an organization whether we're an expert by experience whether we're a paid professional when we all come together and work together in co-production look what can be achieved and, and i think that's really really important that it isn't just about us active prospects or this group or this group it's about everybody equal partners working together and i have to say i don't know about everyone here i've obviously been involved in these projects and it's it's quite emotional to see the last two years in an hour all brought together because when you're in it day to day you don't actually see what's being achieved or, or how it impacts on the wider networks. So I just wanted to put that out there that, you know, it's really important that it isn't just about particular. And we would like more people to be involved um, with, with the things that we are doing and open that up. But it is it is everybody on this call that makes the difference and, and participates and, and brings their skills and knowledge to make things better for people with learning disabilities. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, Jade. Does anybody have any questions for anybody here? I did see a hand go up earlier. No? Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. The piece has been recorded, so Janice will work her magic and it will be um, available if anybody would like to listen back to anything or if anybody was unable to join it from the beginning. 